Hi, and welcome back to my lab. Today I have something very interesting. Now this thing is a MAD, a magnetic anomaly detector. This one is the ASQ81. It uses optically pumped magnetometers using metastable helium cells. I found that unit in a military shop in UK. It was quite expensive, about 1,000 euros, including shipping cost and customs. This device is supposed to be attached to an aircraft or helicopter, like in that picture here. So you can see the cable, which provides the link between the device and the aircraft. And you can see that there is a stabilizer which is missing. There is another picture here, where you can see this device attached to the helicopter. So you can see in details the stabilizer. There will be several episodes for that device. On the first episode, we will do a teardown of this unit. I hope it is complete. In another episode, I will try to get it to work. And at the end, I will try to restore this unit because, as you can see, this thing has seen better days. The paint disappeared on different areas. Fortunately, I have found the original specifications of this device, and you can see. On that page, uh, you have the description of the various colors. So there are three colors actually. A red, which is actually a carmine red. So there is a reference of the colors according to the federal standard colors, 595. There is a black and a lemon yellow color. There are also the dimensions of this device. There are more details on that page. There are also the dimensions of the stabilizer. The diameter is around 22 inches, something like 50 centimeters. We can notice also that there is a static pressure port here. So there is a compensation of altitude, so we should find inside a static pressure sensor. Normally the gravity center is on the center of that device, but on that actual device the center of gravity is on the front of this device, so I think that the stabilizer is also a counterweight. If we suppose that this thing is complete and nothing was removed, the noise floor of that system is very low, approximately 16 picotesla, peak to peak, in 1 Hz bandwidth or so. First, let's remove the front dome. This thing has been already opened, some screws are missing here. Wow, look at that. As you can see, there are two connectors. One is labeled signal, the second one power supply. Okay, on the front, there is this device. So this looks like a static pressure port. So this is probably a pressure sensor. Okay, effectively, it is written. You cannot see, but it is written range. So the range is 0 0.3. PSI D, so D probably for differential, and so this sensor is from pain instruments. On the rear there is a plastic assembly stuff, I don't know if it is the electronic boards or something like that, but it seems attached with cables, but I'm not sure. We can see on the top here the system, which permits to attach the cable. And we can see that there is also a counterweight. This permits to adjust the center of gravity of that system. According to this drawing, the static pressure port should be here. So this is obviously this hole here. Okay, you can see the nameplate here. ESQ81V. Okay, so this is just a kind of shock absorber for the shaft of this thing. It seems difficult to take apart this thing. I will start by removing the screws here. Okay, so I can see two large circular connectors.
It seems difficult to remove this cable from the front of this unit, so I will try to remove this plastic cover in order to get access to the electronic boards. Okay, we can see here a kind of interface board. These are trimmer capacitors, there are several coils. This plastic stuff permits to get access to the capacitor trimmers. There is a dead code 79, 77. Okay, look at that. These are actually the magnetometers. You can see the lenses. So we can see that we have one sensor here on that axis. So you can see the twisted cables here. So this is obviously connected to a Helmholtz coil, which is just behind that thing. So you can see the lamp here. So this is a helium lamp. It is difficult to see, but we can see this lamp on the other axis here. This sensor measures the magnetic field on that direction. We can see the helium lamp here. We try to zoom. The helium cell is below this thing here. We can see the twisted pair of wires for the connection of the coil which surrounds the helium cell. And on the back of this thing we should find the photodiode which permits the measurement of the transparency of the helium cell. So this cable is normally the output of the photodiode. You can see that we have a, a pair of sensors here. And on the two other axes, you can see that there is also a pair of magnetometers, one pair here and the other one here. So there are in total six magnetometers. I don't know why there is a pair of magnetometers on each axis. Normally the helium lamp is excited using a high frequency signal. Contrary to the ASQ504, the magnetometers are on the rear of that device and the electronic boards are on the front. Let's have a look on the electronic side. I will try to remove this cover. As you can see there are several screws. Look at that. Look at these ICs. There is a very thick conformal coating. Yeah, these parts are from Texas Instruments. This device was manufactured actually by Texas Instruments. So it makes sense to find the Texas Instruments parts on that thing. I think there is no chance to find data sheets of these parts. There is a strange part here. It seems to be a transistor. It is mounted on this dissipator. Yes, and it is written a Q1 here. So this is effectively a transistor. And this is the transformer. The secondary, as you can see, is partitioned. This is maybe a high voltage transformer, but I'm not sure. As you can see, this terminal is connected to this cable here, so this seems to be effectively a high voltage cable. Look at that, this is a high frequency board. These golden transistors are from Texas, of course. It is difficult to see the part number of these transistors. Okay. 
look at that. There is another interesting board. That's all for this episode. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.